Today we're going to share a drink which substitutes out everything you'd usually find in an espresso martini, bringing in really interesting ingredients and creating a breathtaking drink that you're going to want to try whilst retaining that DNA of an espresso martini. First we'll make an espresso martini which just makes one simple ingredient switch which has a massive positive impact and then in the second part of the video we'll show you the showstopper, the rule breaker espresso martini. Without giving too much away, this drink's built around the flavour profile of an amazing base ingredient and it's also caffeine free. So if you're kind of put off espresso martinis because you like to sleep at night, then this drink might just be for you. So welcome back. You guys might be familiar with this face. I do. From our previous video. This is Matt Hastings. And if you've not seen it already, this video follows on from our how to taste whiskey video, which was incredibly informative, incredibly valuable. Thank you very so much. Thanks for sharing. Fun. Yeah, thanks for sharing the information. So Matt's role is uh, I am the master blender for the McNean Distillery. That's a small, organic, independent distillery on the west coast of Scotland. Nice. And obviously you guys know I love espresso martinis. There's been a lot of espresso martini content on the channel. It bridges the worlds of coffee and spirits perfectly together. But what kind of made you want to make a version of an espresso martini? Well, whiskey and coffee are just natural bedfellows. Uh, if you look at things like the Irish coffee or the Revolver, like the flavours work so well together. And there's so much potential in the espresso martini to incorporate new flavours and just have a much more fun, interesting experience. Yeah. I think the spectrum of flavour in vodka is fairly narrow. Vodka, broadly, tastes fairly neutral. But within whiskey, there are like thousands of flavours we can pull from. And today we're going to celebrate the flavours in Nicknean, which is going to be fun, in two different ways. So first of all, we're going to make a whiskey espresso martini, as you might know it. But being the kind of people that we are, we didn't want to just stop there. We're going to take this as far as we possibly can in the second drink of today. And that's going to sub out every ingredient in an espresso martini, replacing it with something completely different whilst maintaining that really nice DNA of the espresso martini. So first of all, we're going to make this straight swap, subbing out the vodka, bringing in the whiskey to make a classic espresso martini featuring delicious whiskey. Excellent. Can't wait. So based on Nick Nian and the kind of flavour profile you have there, what are your kind of go-to whiskey espresso martini specs? I'll do 40 ml of the Nick Nian organic single malt scotch whiskey, and that's about 20 ml of the coffee liqueur, 20 ml of fresh espresso, and then sweetened to taste. So it could be you know, 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 ml of, of sugar syrup. Depends on the coffee liqueur, but also depends on how sweet you like your espresso martinis. And in a very rare turn of events, I didn't make this. Yeah. This you made is, this for me. This is for you. This is an absolute treat. Enjoy. Being served. It's like when you're a passenger in your own car. <laughs> this is Matt's whiskey espresso martini. Let's taste. There's just so much more going on when it's whiskey rather than vodka. I think vodka has its place in the espresso martini sometimes, but it's so neutral, it brings no real flavor. The same with the white sugar doesn't really bring much flavor, but with the whiskey in there, it's got depth, it's got complexity. Do you like it? That's delicious. It's a really big sweet treat. Mm. Big punch of coffee, loads of like fruitiness from the whiskey, yeah. and then the sugar rounding it all out. It's just yummy. It's a really it's good got more going on, martini. Right? So that's a really good base. I'm gonna go back for seconds. But now we've got this, which is a really kind of delicious, complex espresso martini with that single substitution, vodka out whiskey in. Give that a try. But now we're gonna take this to the next level and do our complete substitution, creating something brand new and very, very exciting. So we've established that an espresso martini with whiskey is fantastic. But what we're gonna do now is take it even further. So the first substitution we're gonna make is gonna be the same as last time. So we're gonna go in with 30 mils of our whiskey. And then the key flavors we're looking for are gonna be uh, lemon posset, stone fruit, and caraway rye bread. So citrusy, creamy, juicy fruits, and then warming, spiced, enticing. Nice. So a big flavor note we're finding is obviously fruit. I've chosen a coffee, which contains a lot of fruity flavors. However, this, believe it or not, is decaf. I know, and we and I tasted it earlier and I'd not had good decaf before and it mm. is phenomenal. Right. It's amazing texture, really yeah. vibrant and lively and yeah, it's delicious. So there's loads of stone fruit flavor in here. Got some kind of fresh fruit in there as well, which Nick Nian is not unfamiliar with. And just a little bit of spice, just kind of, it's coffee, so it has a little bit of that kind of spice flavor. But don't be afraid of decaf. Decaf these days is incredible. There's a lot of content about decaf on the internet, but don't be afraid of it. Particularly in the evening, coffee cocktails can be a bit off-putting with all that caffeine, but give it a try with decaf and you won't be disappointed with this. So 40 mils of that is gonna be our first ingredient. And then coffee liqueur for me 
in an espresso martini is slightly problematic. It does have value, as long as it's good quality coffee liqueur. However, coffee liqueur usually contains a spirit of some kind, coffee and a sweetener of some kind. An espresso martini is coffee, spirit and sweetener. So although you're not really changing the drink, you're not really adding anything to it. But with this drink, we're going to add a completely different ingredient, which brings a contrasting flavour to the coffee, but a very complementary flavour to the whiskey. So stone fruit flavours, where are they coming from? Uh, so in it, it comes from our fermentation process. We've got a slightly unusual thing where we co-pitch two yeasts and then we run very, very long fermentation times. Nice. And it's about maximizing, they're called uh, esters, but it's like mid-chain esters. So there's like medium length compounds, but they taste like juicy fruits. They taste like peaches and apricot and pineapple and just fun, mm. fruity things. So to find those flavors in our espresso martini, rather than coffee liqueur, we're subbing this out, bringing in apricot liqueur, apricot brandy, really pulling through those nice stone fruit characteristics and a little bit of sweetness as well. So. So far, we've got a double espresso, which is decaf and fruity, kind of weird. Not vodka, we've got our nickname whiskey, super delicious, which is our flavor profile. We've got the apricot brandy instead of coffee liqueur. And then for our sweetener, historically, this would be sugar syrup, which again, can be valuable. But if it's a white sugar in particular, it doesn't really bring anything. It just sweetens the drink. But in terms of flavor, very little. So honey, Scotland. Do you get honey in Scotland? I think you do. You do, yeah, yeah, especially <laughs> this kind of honey. So the heather honey, obviously Scotland is very famous and very pretty and very purple when it's covered in heather. Mm -hmm. um, and when the bees feed off that and make this delicious honey, it's light floral and it's almost like it's kind of malty. You're, you're adding this almost um, biscuity, caramelized -y kind of flavor to it. Yeah, which the whiskey has as well. Mm -hmm. So really nice complimentary flavor and actually brings something to the drink beyond sweetness. And all we've done here is combine two parts honey one part water and then the final ingredient in terms of our liquids something a bit weird if you follow this channel for a while and you've watched some of my videos about the espresso martini i'm a big fan of a pinch of salt or a saline solution just brings everything together makes it kind of pop and kind of harmonize but we're not going to do that today we're going to do something different which is add five mils of what i call a miso stock so this is essentially one part miso to two parts water and want to talk about umami yeah, well, it's one of the fundamental flavors, adding savory to something. Miso in particular is really interesting, so we are having a little smell of this earlier. And it smells suspiciously like a distillery. It's got that <laughs> kind of, of um, <laughs> that this ferment and earthiness, and it, well, it's, it's kind of got this barley characteristic, obviously it's a bit soybeans, but it's like, that smells like the inside of a distillery to me, like like you're cleaning out the, the mash tun or cleaning out the mm. wash or whatever. Like, it's funky, fruity, fermented, earthy, yeah. and you get that salinity, which you, we do get a little bit in the Nick and it's got this kind of coastal maritime saltiness about it. So yeah. you get, you're adding like multiple ele uh, flavor elements and seasoning the drink at the same time, which is really yeah. cool. And it's also got that kind of creamy texture as well with it being mm. not clear. And I think that really works nicely, making the drink kind of creamy. So one of the flavor notes is lemon posset in the Nick Nian. This has that element of creaminess. It doesn't taste like lemon posset at all, <laughs> but it's creamy makes it really moorish and we've had this drink once we drank pretty much the whole thing because we just kept going back for more and more and umami flavors particularly this miso just work really nicely for that so we're going to give this a good shake up with lots of ice and then we're going to finish off the drink and then we're just going to fine strain this into this very special espresso martini glass lovely and foamy lovely and creamy and as matt does that i'm just going to prep our garnish which is just a little bit of lemon zest to tie in with those lemon posset flavors. Whoa, that's full. <laughs> <laughs> Expressed over the drink. And that just it. brings that real nice citric freshness. It's what we call a risky meniscus. It really is, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picking that up. But there we have our rule break in espresso martini, caffeine free, whiskey based, complimentary stone fruit flavors, honey sweetness, miso deliciousness and a little bit of lemon zest on the nose. So, big sips. Sparkling. Mm. Good? Mm. <laughs> really good. So does this taste like an espresso martini version of McNean? It does, sorry, I'm still a little bit out of breath from shaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's really, obviously very fruity, really citrus forward. You get loads of, kind of orange peel, grapefruit peel, lemon peel, very fresh. Mm. Mm. Is this? It's so good. It's really good. <laughs> Just like a, a, a rich fruitiness, which is again, it's very, very fresh fruit. So it's not like having tinned peaches or um, like travel sweets or something. Mm. It's like having fresh apricots, and it's yep. really lively. 
the whiskey comes through, the good quality coffee with those like strawberry, passion fruit, apricot notes, I'm a big fan of. It feels like an espresso martini though. It's got that creamy texture. The miso really does work magic here. And I think that's pretty tasty. Good job. Thank you very much. Go team. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the moral of the story here isn't necessarily to make exactly this drink in exactly the specs we've given you, although it's a really delicious drink. It's to be kind of open-minded to playing with drinks, experimenting with drinks, picking kind of core flavors that you're really interested in and then building layers around them. And whiskey as an espresso martini base is fantastic. Nick Nian, awesome. Thank Thanks you for being here. Thank you very much for having us. It's been wicked. Anything you want to say to the audience while you're here? Um, please, please drink, share, and love and enjoy whiskey with everyone that you know. Love it. Couldn't agree more. Thanks again to Matt for being here. This has been great fun. Thanks for having me. Thanks to Nick Nian for being a partner in this video, and thanks to you guys for watching. You can watch more fun content on screen right now. Subscribe if you like coffee, if you like cocktails. Enjoy this, enjoy whiskey, and we'll see you again. Thanks for watching. That's mine. It's like the arms. Do you want to me? To me? To me? To me?